Hello, and welcome back to the session number six, which is about innovation-focused international development policies in Africa. So this is about broader issues connected to the innovations, development, and uh, entrepreneurial universities. So the objective of this um, session is to understand first how international development cooperation with Africa has developed. We mostly talk about uh, OECD countries and Africa, Europe, North America, and so on. And to know what are the current practices of uh, international development cooperation with Africa, the so-called Beyond Eight cooperation, and to know what are the practices and possibilities for such uh, development cooperation with Africa that would focus on innovation. So what is innovation-focused development cooperation? Again, uh, there are possibilities to study these through the PP slides and the book and to do a model-based quiz. So, Let's start again from the key points of the session. The first is that uh, international development cooperation or development aid with Africa, it has changed increasingly in the beyond aid agenda. And this agenda underlines the importance of innovation for development. So innovations have become a focus in development cooperation with Africa. And such innovation-focused development cooperation, it supports national strategies and legislation related to innovation, innovation systems, innovation policies, and gen innovation generating activities. So development cooperation supports the transformation of the uh, national, you know, development strategies and legislation towards more innovation-focused activities. And the third one is that uh, in this uh, international development cooperation, there is a need to integrate into this innovation focus that these innovations would be responsible innovations and the innovation policies would be transformative. So the cooperation with Africa would result in eradicating poverty, increasing equality, and promoting welfare among all Africans, not only a selected group, but among all Africans. And of course, this needs to be done within the framework of economic, social, and environmental uh, sustainability. So I don't go into details of the long history of uh, development, development aid and development policy, but let's uh, clarify a few concepts here. So what is then development? Not as in general sense, but as an active intervention. So development means to create better life for everyone so that everyone will meet their basic needs, you know, food, water, healthy places to live, services, and so on, that, you know, they would fulfill the needs of the people and offer a potentiality to develop oneself, while at the same time being treated with respect and dignity. So it's, it is a top-down approach, but the respect and dignity of people is um, practiced. What is then development aid? It's usually been defined as a one-way support from richer country or wealthier country to a less developed country or poorer country. And this is practiced in a context when it is seen that the aid recipients are not able to move from poverty or from less development to a better development without this external assistance. 
you know, sometimes development aid, you know, hinders empowerment of those who receive the aid and, and create dependencies or maintain dependencies with the aid donor and the aid receiver. But development aid, instead of that, development cooperation is seen much more interactive and reciprocal process. So all aid receivers or recipients, they are also active stakeholders who together with the donors involved in the planning and design and scoping what is development. And uh, if you go in the background, and these are very basic, so I don't uh, spend too much time for here. So the division between the, the global north, the more development world, and the less developed global south, most of Africa, it was very sharp and clear. But nowadays, if you look in the contemporary time, it's much more uh, unclear. There is a transitional country. Some countries have uh, lived from uh, poorer development to a medium term development and so on. So countries in transition exist. And so that means that, you know, the North South division is not so evident anymore. And of course, China, India and so on, they are becoming more important players as well in development aid. And uh, sometimes this new development cooperation aid or support do not follow the traditional OECD development assistance committee perspectives. So a lot has changed in development aid and cooperation in the past 10, 15 years. And development actors, they can be, you know, divided into states, into civil society and in the market. And there are members of the OECD DAC uh, countries, and then those who do not believe, belong into that, then there are private sector uh, supporters, global finance actors, NGOs, and so on. And the result is that there becomes kind of blended finance, combining public finance with private investment. So this is becoming increasingly common. So private sector is involved in development uh, uh, aid and support and cooperation. And if we very shortly talk about, you know, development and policy, so modernization was the key word for the 20th century. So international development policies aim to modernize those countries in which this aid was uh, sent. You know, they were seen that, you know, science, technology and democracy are the cornerstones and this is what uh, the aid should uh, support. Then in the 21st century that we are living, this modernization has become more as a background issue or the more focus has gone towards sustainable development as discussed in this lecture course, and to the beyond aid agenda that is more reciprocal that the both partners, or the donor and the receiver, will get benefits out of the process. And uh, the participation of stakeholders has become more common, so wider participation. And of course, all development assistance is uh, connected to international politics. So behind there are interests of foreign trade, exports, imports, environmental protection, technological development. And uh, these topics means that, you know, development assistance aid and cooperation is part of much broader geopolitical setting. In general, the assistance has increased, so uh, the money invested into this activity has grown substantially in the past two decades. But uh, at the same time, while this money has increased, a lot of 
or a substantial part of this uh, money is also to the interest of the donor. So it can be supporting the enterprises of the donating country to be present in the aid receiving country, for example. And sometimes uh, the, the donor also suggests, if not, you know, uh, demands that the funding is uh, directed to the issues that would, uh, you know, directly help the donor country. For example, you know, some funding was sent on the obligation to mitigate the, the crisis or the refugee crisis or the refugee mobility or the asylum seeker mobility from Africa to Europe. So that kind of project was supported that, you know, prevented the migration from Africa to Europe. And also what is particular is that wealthy people, uh, some individuals, they have become a key players. You know, the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation that donates already now billions of United States dollars annually to improve health and development in developing countries. We will talk about that specifically later. So there are individuals who play an important role in this. And there's a table to discuss about this process from modernization to more like neoliberal, neostructural part, and then to this beyond aid agenda. But it's not uh, time to go into details here, but you can check this table and uh, source uh, article for it. Then we can talk a bit of this novel beyond aid agenda. And as I mentioned, it is not a one-way donation from wealthier to developing countries, but it bases on the idea that, look, both partners receive economic benefits. Donors and recipients have reciprocal interest in this development. And it's international, all aspects that affect development, a private sector is involved there. We can call it, you know, smart aid. We can talk about financialization. We can talk about technology development, innovations. We include competitive bidding to get to receive aid. There's support for growth-oriented entrepreneurship. There is, you know, mutual business interest between donor and receiver expertise, experience, knowledge transfer, knowledge development, knowledge creation. So several of these keywords exist in this Beyond Aid agenda. And uh, of course, there are still uh, traditional targets like, you know, poverty alleviation. But here it is seen that the growth would take place in the private sector. And that private sector is the main engine that would, you know, take people out of the poverty. Not the public sector, not the, you know, governmental sector, but it's private sector. So it is then talking about, you know, neoliberal approaches in development aid, uh, bringing, you know, these new actors and finance into this uh, international development and also you know creating linkages between you know less developed countries so south south development cooperation and innovations have become an essential part of this development aid this beyond aid aspect so what is this innovation focused development cooperation that is increasingly relevant in the uh, relations between uh, wealthy and poorer countries in their development um, uh, issues. It refers to all policies and practices in international development aid and assistance that aim to foster systemic and interactive development and the use of innovations to improve local socio-economic development, which then brings into national development, which then brings into continental development. 
So it is a primary policy and practice in Africa nowadays. So it focuses on economic growth and employment, alleviation of uh, poverty and redu reducing inequality. These are the targets, whether these are rich and other issues. And innovations play a role also in the social um, sustainability development goals, SDGs, that were launched by the United Nations five years ago, especially number nine, build resilient infrastructure, promote inclusive and sustainable industrialization and foster innovation, especially the latter part, foster innovation. Also innovations are strongly present in the African Union agenda 2063 and more importantly also the donor countries international organizations they also emphasize the role of innovation in their development cooperation between their organizations their countries and african recipients and China is also connecting <coughs> innovation related issues by you know supporting the structural development processes and projects in in Africa so huge investments into infrastructure that would then support innovation development uh, you know, sometimes there is an issue that what type of uh, activities in the focus of this uh, development assistance uh, in the modernization period, there was a lot of focus on science, technology and innovation, this type of policy development and uh, technology transfer idea. So we would take the technology from the north and put it in the south in Africa but offers the, often the, the results by short term. Uh, but gradually then the idea of knowledge transfer has been rejected and it, was, it is seen that knowledge creation is something instead that should be focused in these projects. So context specific, interactive and complex process in which you know knowledge develops into innovation. So knowledge as such is not moved into one context to another because it always changes. So uh, this requires then that, you know, there need to be, you know, systematic, interactive and contextualized knowledge creation processes to foster the development and the emergence of innovations in Africa. And it's this innovation focus in development cooperation means that it is very complex process and it needs to be embedded into local context and circumstances. And how then these countries can, you know, enhance their capabilities to develop and use innovations for their own social development. And uh, this means also policy support for such development. Then if we think about uh, what kind of aim is there in another aim in this development assistance, it is a little bit what we talked about earlier about triple helix and quadruple helix. It's the kind of networking of the key actors in a policy sector, but also creating connections between uh, public sector and, and uh, private sector. And, you know, involving different stakeholders, actors and policy implementation levels. So the innovation policy paradigms and development paradigms, they have, you know, both changes if we look for the past decades. So like I said, discussed earlier, there was focus on the science, technology, innovation policies, then about nation, national innovation policies, and now much more towards transformative innovation policies. Similarly, in development policy paradigms, it has been changing from modernization to 
poverty reduction to contemporary beyond aid and innovation focused development. So that's a way to look at transformative innovation policy and the beyond aid agenda. They fit together in 2020s in Africa. And there are a lot of different actors, and I don't go into details in them, but you know, international actors being uh, important players, you can Google them, you can find them from the United States, from Finland, from United Kingdom, like HDAFI, SAIS, and CII. So business oriented, innovation oriented uh, examples of how these are done in practice, but you can Google them and find them easily. And some, you know, novelties in the case of Finland that, you know, funding the national state funding technology agency that how Finnish technology enterprises could cooperate or could market their products in Africa. So creating this kind of connections between national economy and the aid receiver and, and aiming to create this kind of innovation technology focused uh, development aid, the BEAM project, business with impact, an intervention in Finnish development policy. And then finally, conclusions. So globally practiced uh, sustainable development goals and the beyond aid agenda, they underline both the importance of innovations for development and this current cooperation, this beyond aid cooperation focusing on innovations, it's important in Africa, but cooperation is not always equal among donors and recipients. So the positions do not uh, fit always in equal way. An innovation focused development cooperation in Africa especially supports the institutional framework. So helping the countries to redesign national strategies and legislation related to innovation, innovation system, innovation policies, and often these based on science, technology, innovation activities. And there is needed to broaden the development cooperation to include innovation, to inclusive innovation that would then support the transformative innovation systems in Africa to eradicate poverty, increase equality, and promote welfare among all Africans throughout the whole continent. So reflections then from the module two from Finland. Uh, innovation policies need to be systematic and they need to support the design and development of national, regional, and sectoral innovation systems. So systematic design and development. Instead of focusing only or mostly into STI, the emphasis needs also to be on DUI, doing using interacting based responsible innovations, because that would help local communities and that would bring long term economic, social and environmental sustainability. And active engagement of various stakeholders, including local people, is very important for the development of innovation system. So people belong to this innovation system. They own it as well as technical tools or uh, instruments to promote innovation development, such as inclusive living labs that will be discussed in the next module. And there are exercises for module two. So identify one innovation system in your country. What are the key actors in that and how these actors are connected to each other? And think how this system can be enhanced so that it would support responsible innovations and help local communities? Is there a way to integrate indigenous knowledge into that? Is there a way to put international development aid into that, into that innovation system? And design a picture of this system, sectoral, national, or regional innovation system. Show the linkages between actors and how this 
network then would you know support the responsible innovations that bring economic, social, and environmental sustainability. So references here. Thank you for your attention.